Welcome to episode 3 of this comparison series between Old School RuneScape and the new modern RuneScape 3. Last episode, we started looking at quests that were completely redesigned for the modern update, and this episode, we have one more quest to look at. Welcome back to Old School vs. RuneScape 3. All right, so welcome back. This time, we are trying to get our combat level in old school a little bit higher because we are headed towards Black Knight's Fortress. And right now, our combat level is uh, not really what we need it to be. So we're going to work on these cows here, try to get our combat level up. But in December, I did the Christmas event in old school and in RuneScape 3. So while I'm working here at the cows, let's check that out. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you Christmas in March. Sorry. So I'm going to go ahead and try this holiday event. Maybe I can get something out of it. And we can see how these kind of events are different in both games. I know they don't have the exact same event in RuneScape 3 going on right now, but... They have lots of other stuff, so let's see how this goes. So basically, in this quest, Santa put his good-for-nothing son, Jack Frost, in charge of basically everything, I guess to try to teach him a lesson, and Jack Frost messed it up, and there are no gingerbread gnomes, and we need those gingerbread gnomes, so just like everyone else in RuneScape, we're going to do this guy's work for him. What a great parent. Whoa! Auntie Santa! Put on a shirt, my guy, please! This is a family-friendly show. I don't, I get, that's so gross. He's in here wiggling around like a bowl full of smelly. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Okay. So this guy was imprisoned here a long time ago by Santa, but he's the only person strong enough to help us stop Jack Frost. So we're gonna bust him out. And soon it will be the year of anti-Christmas. Oi! <laughs> Uh, sometimes I forget that this game was made by British people. <laughs> Oi! <laughs> well, look who it is. Get out! <laughs> yes, kill him. Get out of here. So Jack Frost bailed and Auntie Santa went after him, so, uh... This plan is going really well so far. Get in some eggs, get in some flour, get in some ginger and cinnamon. Make a gingerbread shield because this game is ridiculous. Hey buddy, just gonna, oh yeah, looks like it works. Let's take the key, booyah. Boom, let's let these guys out. Look, I deserve some kind of reward for this, all right? This was, hey, look at me when I'm talking to you, man. Look at all these goodies. This quest was definitely worth it. Guess who's in the Christmas spirit? Me, it's me. All right, so we did the Christmas event in old school. So we're going to do this advent calendar that they've got in RuneScape 3 where Every day, you can open up a different little slot here and you get a free gift. So we're going to do this right now and see what we get. Two medium stars. Those give you bonus experience. Combat dummies. You can always use those. Hearts of ice. I don't really care about those. That's for treasure hunter. Magic note paper. That's nice. Those sell for like a thousand each. So that's, that's like 200k that we could get off of that. Medium hydra lamps. Cool. Huge prismatic star. Medium supreme stars. Okay. Medium Phoenix Lamps, Medium Celebration Lamps, Silver Hawk Feathers and Springs, cool, cool. I do not have enough room in the backpack, oh, okay. Lava Lanterns, Thousand Oddments, sweet. Okay, I have no idea what that is. One huge Prismatic Star, one medium Protean Pack, cool. Two medium Bubbling Lamps, man, all this free XP. Two Ancient Relics, one Christmas Cosmetic, and of course, a Treasure Hunter Key. All right, so this is all the stuff we got from the advent calendar. So let's just use all this stuff. All right, level six, went up two magic levels and reached the total level 100 milestone. Went up two magic levels again to eight. Two defense levels and reached combat level 14. Two defense levels again, level 14. Let's do fletching. 
because I kind of want to skip those early fletching levels if I can. Level 7, nice. Let's open this cash bag. 8k. 8k again, 16k. Boom. We should attack level 13 and strength level 10. All right. Cooking level 7, fire making level 3. There we go, not bad. Now let's do a phoenix lamp for ranged. And I didn't even lose it. That's what the phoenix lamp does is sometimes you have a chance that it won't be consumed and you can use it again. So let's just do the same thing again. Let's just do phoenix lamp ranged. Four ranged levels. I was level 5 ranged. Now I'm level 12. And I still didn't... Okay, let's do, let's do ranged again. Two ranged levels, level 14. I'm just, I'm combat level 16 and I haven't actually done any skilling yet. Uh, and I understand this is what people don't like. Like I've just been standing here in the bank using these lamps and I haven't even done any skilling and I'm combat level 16. Two agility levels, level seven now. That's nice. Okay, so this is gonna give XP in the one I choose and then also some XP in all my other skills. So this should be like a major XP thing. Let's do prayer uh, and let's just do both of them. Yeah, wow. And now I'm combat level 18. <laughs> oh my gosh. There you go. I mean, that's one thing that people don't like about this game is I've just been standing here in the bank using all these free gifts that I got and I'm combat level 18 now. <laughs> Now, let's use the Protean Pack. Now, if you don't know what a Protean Pack is, it basically helps you skill in whatever way that you pick. So you can pick Protean Bars, and so you can just go up to an anvil and just hammer away on those bars, and you won't actually make anything, but you'll get experience, a lot of experience. Or you can get planks to use in construction. You have traps where you can catch things. You have hides. You have the logs. You have the memories for divination, and then you have cogs for invention. I'm going to take logs. I'm not going to use all of them, but I'll show you. I can get fletching and fire making experience from these. So I'll come out here where I can light a fire. If I say craft and then say use the knife and then fletch and burn logs. So you have fletch logs and fletch and burn. If I fletch and burn, I'll just stand here and I'll get fletching and fire making XP. Okay, I'm already level four. Look at it, just shoot up. So while I was doing this, I got this Christmas cracker paper, and I think it has something to do with the Christmas event. So after I'm done using all the stuff I got from the advent calendar, I'm going to head to the Grand Exchange and talk to Santa Claus. Just got 200k for that magic note paper, no big deal. So before we actually go to Santa, I want to look at the levels we got from the advent calendar and from a little bit of treasure hunter that I did. So let's take a look at those levels. Look at that, level 16 attack. Level 21 Constitution, 4 Mining, 12 Strength, 7 Agility, 20 Defense, 16 Ranged, 7 Cooking, 7 Prayer, 14 Fire Making, 16 Magic, 14 Fletching. We've gotten so many levels, we've unlocked so much content, so that just shows you exactly why a lot of people don't like all the free experience, because I've done pretty much nothing with all of these skills and look how high some of them are and look how high my combat level is 21 and I I've barely done any fighting in this account so that's that's why a lot of people don't like this game because of all the handouts that it gives you I don't personally mind it I, I mean I will say let me say this doing all the skilling that I just did in old school because I do all my old school footage first and then I come here and do RuneScape 3. All the skilling that I just did in old school, it was a lot more satisfying when I had to achieve it all myself. I will say that it was more satisfying to achieve those levels on my own than it was to get them with these lamps and all the bonus experience. However, I will say this makes me more excited to unlock some content because I feel like I unlock more doing this, but maybe it's better to earn the skills and earn the unlocks than to just have them handed to you. I don't know. I know I know a lot of people feel that way, but let me know in the comments, even if you're a RuneScape 3 lover, even if you love RuneScape 3, let me know what you think about all these free handouts, because it was kind of anticlimactic, especially after I had to work so hard for every level in old school. So let me know what you guys think. Even people who like RuneScape 3, I really want to know what you think. 
All right, time for the Christmas event. Let's talk to Santa Claus. I almost made it onto the nice list. Almost? This is outrageous. So there's not actually a quest for this Christmas event like in old school. Basically, Santa misplaced all his presents around Gilinor. We have to find them and bring them back if we want to be on the nice list. And, uh, I actually didn't find any presents on this account before the event was over. But there is another event that I did do. The Christmas Cracker. So Santa explains that while you're skilling, you'll get these little pieces of Christmas Cracker wrapping paper. And if you add enough of those to the Christmas Cracker, when the Christmas Cracker is complete, it'll open and you'll get a bunch of really cool goodies. You also get construction experience every time you add wrapping paper to the Christmas Cracker. So I actually did this over and over while I was doing different quests on this account. So that's pretty cool. All right, that's enough Christmas. Now back to your regularly scheduled programming. All right, 20 defense. Ooh, combat level 29. We're so close. I got to 21 defense and my combat level is still 29, but it's so close to 30. But I was thinking I have an idea for a way to maybe boost my combat level over 30, but a little bit more quickly than killing cows. And it's something I need to do anyway to finish all the free to play quests. So I'm going to do Restless Ghost because that should boost my prayer. And then maybe that will get me to where I need to go. So I'm going to leave the cows. Bye, cows. Let's go try this quest. Let's see if this works. So for those who don't know, this guy, Father Eric, has a ghost problem. But thankfully, we ain't afraid of no ghosts. So we got to go to the swamp to talk to a guy who will help us get rid of the ghosts. Hi. Hi. I was recording and my beautiful wife came in. Her name's Amy. She's rolling her eyes. She did not want to be in the video. No, I did it. <laughs> Can you tell them why I made you say hi? No. No. <laughs> so we're thinking of doing a series where I make Amy play RuneScape with me. And you're not a video game person, are you? No. No, she just, she's never really played video games. She has played RuneScape a little bit, but not very much. So in the series, I wouldn't give her very much help. She would just try to figure it out on her own. And we would play both Old School and RuneScape 3 if that's something people are interested in. If you guys are interested, leave a comment because Amy's down to do it. Yeah. <laughs> she, she says... <laughs> it took some convincing. It took some convincing, but she's, she's down to do it. So if, if that's something you guys would be interested in, leave a comment down below because we'd love to make that for you. We think that would be pretty interesting, so let us know. All right, let's open this boy up. And there's the ghost. Here he is. Hey there, ghost. So this guy's telling us we have to go find his head in Wizard's Tower or he can't be at peace. So that's our next stop. I'm trying to think what's the best way to get there. Because I've been playing RuneScape 3 so much. It might be exactly the same, but I've been going a different way. Because I can just use the Lodestone Network. I usually just teleport to Draenor and then head south. And there you go. But can't do that here. So walking it is. All right, here we are in the basement of Wizard's Tower. Let's see, I know it's around here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Oh yeah, come get me, buddy. Yeah, nice try. And the skeleton goes down. Os versus three is the winner. All right, next time, don't get ahead of yourself. Release! Hey, look, buddy, can we not yell release? This is a family show, all right? There we go, Restless Ghost done. Our prayer level is now 11, so let's check that combat level. 30 combat level. All right, now those Black Knights are level 33, but I think with some food, we should be just fine. Okay, now I am mining to get some ore because I need to get my smithing up to 26. So this is what I'm gonna be doing for a while. It's just... Mining my own business. <laughs> Alright, so I decided to do Doric's quest because I thought that would help me get some smithing XP, but it wasn't until I actually just finished the quest and got all my rewards that I realized it gave mining XP, not smithing XP. So, oh, well, I'm a genius, but 24 mining isn't bad, I guess, but... 
Oh my gosh, I just want to do the quest. All right, well, I feel like an idiot. You don't actually need 26 smithing. That's just if you don't want to buy the stuff you need. But I am totally willing to waste money. I am definitely, definitely willing to waste money over skilling all day. I, can, I got things to do, man. I got things to do. All right, we're finally starting Black Knight's Fortress. We're talking to Sir Amic, and if you've never done this quest before, basically, he's the leader of the White Knights, and they found out something bad is going on with the Black Knights. He gave us a piece of paper with special instructions on it, so let's go outside and open it. This message will self-destruct in three, two, one. Oh my gosh, all zeros. I'm gonna be here for three hours. Ugh, just hit him, please. We are struggling a little bit here, but that's because we have to go through a dialogue thing before we can go through this door, but you can't do dialogue when you're in combat. So we have to fight this guy first and we're struggling a little bit, but we'll get through it. We'll get through it. We have plenty of stake. I need to go up this ladder. I thought that was a black knight right there, but it was me. <laughs> well, I know what I'm supposed to do, but I don't think it'll let me do it early. Why exactly would I want to do that? Yeah, just trust me, dude. Just, you gotta, you just gotta go with me on this one, all right? So we made it through to this abandoned hallway and we're listening through this grate and we overhear that this witch is making them an invincibility potion and that a regular cabbage will mess it up. So, you know what we do? Since we're little stinkers, we throw a cabbage in there. What the f- <laughs> All right, quest complete, and we got two and a half K. Pretty good. Now, for the last time, let's hop over to RuneScape 3 and see just what the heck they've done with this quest. All right, so the next quest on the docket for us is the Death of Chivalry which is the 2013 rework of Black Knight's Fortress. So, the thing is, we're definitely going to need some food and we're definitely going to need some new armor because, oh boy, you guys will see. If you haven't done this quest before, you will see what I'm talking about. We, we need to be prepared for a major, major, major fight. So we gotta get, we gotta get ready. We gotta get some new armor. I don't think this Pathfinder outfit is going to cut it anymore. So we're gonna have to figure it out, but I think I know what we're gonna do. So I'm 22 defense right now, and I want to get to 30 because my attack is 32, my strength is 31, so I'd like to get my defense to at least 30 so that I can kind of be all in the same ballpark, and then I can get mithril armor and weapons. So then I will be in business. So that's my goal right now is to get 30 defense. See, this is what happens when you try to bounce back and forth between Old School and RuneScape 3. I forgot that the sheep that used to be here were moved over here, and these cows were moved way back there, so it's actually a lot simpler to just go to the cows that are to the east of Lumbridge instead. But when you're going back and forth between the games, especially since the way Old School is laid out is more nostalgic for me, I, I remember that layout way better than this one, then I get all confused. So, all right, we're here now, we're at the cows. That's what's important. So I just got to 25 defense. I'm five levels away from 30. I'm going to go drop all this cooked meat off in the bank, and then I'll keep killing cows, and we'll get to 30 defense in no time. So I just got to 20 agility from a no training at all i haven't gone to any agility courses this is mostly from my silverhawk boots so we're gonna take these off let's see right click change level we'll change it to 20. we'll still be getting about the same amount of of growth that we were maybe even more until we start to get into the 30s so look at that lots and lots of agility experience gained and we've done nothing that is the lazy man's training right there I, I love it all right there we go 30 defense there we go I think that's all I'm gonna need all right we have our new armor set up looks pretty cool looks pretty cool eventually I want to get an offhand 
scimitar because I prefer two-handed. But uh, for now, we'll go with the shield. And I think we're about ready to start this quest. All right, so to start this quest, we talk to Sir Owen. Sir Owen? Sir Owen? Sir Owen? Oh, he's an NPC. No. He's not- Oh, what the- So yeah, some of you may not know this, but uh, some of the NPCs in RuneScape 3 are voice acted. So that's pretty neat. So basically, while you're talking to this guy, Sarah Doman himself appears, and he tells you that he wants you to infiltrate the Black Knight's fortress. Huh? So Sarah Doman provides the armor of Captain Dulson, the captain of the Black Knights, and he wants me to put the armor on and escort Sir Owen inside the fortress pretending he's my prisoner. Pretty sneaky, sis. Wow, look at this place. Well, I mean, look at the ground floor of this place. This bar up here shows us how suspicious they are of us, so we have to say the right things to make them believe that I really am this Captain Dulson guy. My reasons are none of your concern. That's all fine and good, Captain, but why do you have a Pathfinder cape? So once you make it to the top of the fortress, you discover a ritual chamber and a portal that is no longer working. So you have to repair the ritual, open the portal, and go through it. Once you're through the portal, you find a damsel in distress who is being harassed by these black knights. So you kill them. Okay, here's the deal. This quest is very, very, very long, and I feel like I'm only scratching the surface, so I would recommend to go play this quest, like, for real. It's, it's pretty good. But I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. I'm going to skip straight to a spoiler, though. So if you care about that, if you don't want to be spoiled about this quest, uh, skip to this time, and you won't be spoiled. I won't talk about it ever again, but... Um, I'm gonna talk about it in, uh, three, two, one, let's time travel. So after we unlock the wand, we discover, dun, 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 that damsel is the villain. She's behind it all. And her name is, is Dawn, by the way. And then some other stuff happens, blah, blah, blah. But then it's time to face Dawn. Let's see how well you fare without your brave knight to aid you. Oh, go. That's a really powerful thing. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, good, yes. Oh, oh, come on, fight, fight. Do something, do anything. There we go, thank you. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Pierce their noble heart. Face me, coward. I'm going to die. That's just what it is. That's, that's just the, uh, the facts of what's happening here. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do here. Come on, come on, come on. Go! No! If I make it out of this alive, it's gonna be amazing. If I make it out of this first encounter alive. Yes, kill her. Kill her. Oh, the stab did not work. Okay, I don't, I can't, I can't do the skeletons again. I can't do the skeletons again. Okay, yeah, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. That's just all, that's, that's what's gonna happen. That's just what's gonna happen. I'm gonna die. Okay, oh my gosh, if I make it out of this, oh my gosh, it's down to the wire. I don't know. Oh, get away from that. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh my goodness. I should not have made it out of that. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. Ladies and gentlemen, quest complete. Oh my gosh. I didn't think I was going to complete that quest on the first playthrough, but... There it is! We did it! Oh, I am so happy. I am so happy. <gasps> well, ladies and gentlemen, we know what that sound means. It means it's time for this episode to wrap up. While I'm talking about stats, we're actually going to be watching me do Restless Ghost in RuneScape 3 because we did it in old school but we haven't done it in RuneScape 3 yet. So you're gonna be watching me do that while we're looking at stats. So first up, let's look at our stats for old school RuneScape. So here on the left, we see our stats from the end of episode one. And on the right, we see our stats from the end of episode two and episode three, since I made it a two-parter. And as you can see here, there is a huge, huge gain just from episode one to episode two slash three. And a lot of that has to do with waterfall quest, especially for 
the attack and strength, but some of that was through training and skilling. So now that we've looked at this, let's look at RuneScape 3. So the first thing you'll notice is that Marcus actually did his screen recordings on his 1080p monitor instead of his 4K monitor like he did for the first episode. And that's why it's so much clearer. <laughs> so sorry about that, guys. From now on, it should be a lot clearer and the screen might be a little more jumbled on RuneScape 3, but it'll all be a lot bigger and you can see everything a lot better. So very sorry about that. But looking at the skills, you can see that even on RuneScape 3, there's been a huge jump, but I don't think it has much to do with quests or with skilling. I think it has mostly to do with lamps and treasure hunter and handouts that were given to us uh, that I talked about at the beginning of this episode. I think that is what we're seeing here, really. So it's not really a good comparison of any effort I've put in because that's not from anything I've done, really. That's really from just handouts that the game has given me. So now that we've looked at those side by side, let's look at our stats from old school next to our stats from RuneScape 3. As expected, we have some huge differences here. Obviously, RuneScape 3 has a lot of skills that just are much, much higher than they are in old school. But look at smithing. Smithing is 15 in old school, and it's only one in RuneScape 3. We didn't touch smithing at all. And I don't remember doing much smithing in old school, but still got that 15 smithing. But most of the stats, especially look at agility. Agility 23, and that's from those boots that I got. Agility in old school is one, because we haven't hit a single obstacle course yet. But as expected, there are some huge differences here, and there's a lot to work on to try to get these to level 99, but it looks like with RuneScape 3, we're kind of getting there a lot quicker, and I think that's because of those handouts and those lamps and all that stuff but we'll see if we can catch up in old school too we'll get there we'll get there and that is the end of episode three guys thank you so so much for all the support you've given me and given this series it just it blows me away how awesome you guys have been and the first video in this series at the time of recording is nearing 3,000 views and that is way 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 more views than I've ever gotten on a YouTube video, so thank you guys so much for all the support. If you like this video, please give it a like. That really does help a lot with the YouTube algorithm and all that stuff. If there's anything you want me to do in this series, any ideas you have that I haven't already mentioned, please put them in the comments. I'd love to read them because we've got a long way from here to level 99 in all skills. So anything I can do to make the journey more fun for me and for you guys, I would love to do that. So please put it in the comments. Thank you guys so much again. You have all been amazing and I will see you all in the next episode.